Good morning, friend. Welcome back to Anchor Homestead. We are out in the grow room, which I'm really excited about. I've got to get the freeze dryer stopped. Oh, much quieter. I want to get some seed soaking so we can go out into the garden. I have a ton of things that I want to get planted today. Corn, sugar snap peas, some black beans, a couple melons, a couple winter squash, and sunflower. So I want to get all of these seeds in the ground today. You might be asking yourself, Becky, I thought you already started a bunch of melons and squash, which I did, and they are looking fabulous. A bunch of them are out there. But a couple of the things that I started did not germinate, and they're things that I really want to try to have in my garden this year to produce, so we're going to start them again. But something that I have not planted anything yet is some sweet corn. I am going to attempt to grow sweet corn this year. I've attempted it every year in my garden and I've never had good success. So we are doing something a little different with the sweet corn this year. How many seeds are in this seed packet? Does it say? 100 seeds. So I think I'm going to do all four of my packets that I have. We are going to try to grow this sweet corn in a raised bed. So I have planted hundreds and hundreds of corn seeds in my last three years of my gardening journey. And I have maybe gotten a total of 10 ears out of that. And I've always tried growing them in the ground and in a ground that's not irrigated. So this year, I'm, I don't think I've ever seen anyone grow corn in a raised bed before, but I'm gonna try that this year. So I am just gonna let my corn soak in some water while I go inside and do some projects to help kind of jumpstart it. This corn is golden bantam sweet corn. I've never grown it before. It says this old standard yellow sweet corn that has been a home gardener's favorite since the beginning of the 20th century. A farmer named William Chambers of Greenfield, Massachusetts, had grown this variety for years. After his death, a friend of Chambers found some of the sweet corn seeds and sold them to Burpee, where they found their way into the catalog in 1902. The plant grows to about six feet, produces seven inch ears loaded with sweet, plump, golden kernels, so three inches apart, one inch deep, after last frost date. We are well past our last frost date. Keep moist, thin to six to nine inches apart, and plants are, oh, when plants are two to three inches tall. You will need a minimum of 10 feet by 10 feet area to ensure proper, proper pollination, and it's a 78 day to maturity. Now that is something interesting, the 10 foot by 10 foot for proper pollination. I do not have that. None of my raised beds are 10 feet by 10 feet. They're four feet by 16 feet. So I am planning to plant out an entire raised bed in corn. So hopefully we'll get some good germination, but only about six months or I don't know, five months, 78 days, we'll tell whether this experiment is gonna work or not. So let me go show you how the seedlings are doing outside. But first, I'm gonna show you this experiment that we started the other day together, and this is trying to grow some fodder for the chickens. I've been coming out here every day and watering them. I thought that they weren't gonna do anything because I hadn't seen any action yet, but as I'm sitting here looking at them, I see something pretty exciting. There is one little seed that has germinated here, so that's promising. I have two different trays. I have one with a little bit of soil, and this one has no soil. And I see a lot more in here that have germinated without the soil. This is sunflower seeds. They're just black oil sunflower seeds. So this is a fun experiment. We'll see, we'll see if I'm able to grow some greens for the girls. I actually see quite a bit of germination in this tray. Right here alone, there is a ton of different seeds that have germinated. And I figured if this becomes a total flop, I can still just give those seeds to the chickens and it's a learning experience. I didn't do a ton of research on growing fodder for chickens. I just, I literally put the seeds on the trays some with some soil, some without some soil, to see what's gonna happen. So this is our melons 
cucumbers, squash, both winter and summer squash. You can see that some of them have great germination and are looking absolutely fantastic. And then some numb have germinated, but this is new as of today. That was not there yesterday, and this is the Atlantic pumpkin, the largest pumpkin in the world record is this variety. So this was my sweet meat, nothing germinated there. And then I wanna try to get some of these planted as well. Here are some of our Sunflower Steve sunflowers, and this is brand new today. Do you see that germination on there? I'm just reuse these pots with some of the Vermont compost. So I wanna to try to get as much of this planted out today as we can. I also have my eucalyptus that I would like to get planted. And then I have two trays of zinnias that are out in the garden. I brought them out there over the weekend and I totally forgot about them. They've been sitting out there. I remembered them just a couple hours ago and I was like, oh yeah, I gotta get those in the ground because they're just sitting in trays in the garden. <laughs> so it rained really, really hard last night, which is great because that means the soil is gonna be super easy to work with and moist for me to plant these seeds. And then we are going into a heat wave. It's gonna be, I think like 65 today, in the 70s tomorrow, and then high 80s for the foreseeable future. So it's kind of a crazy jump. Normally here in the Pacific Northwest, I'm in Southwest Washington, we kind of have a gradual spring. And this year it's going straight to summer, it feels like. So I have got to get my inside projects done. So we will be back when my inside projects are all completed and then we will have fun in the garden together. We had a lot of fun in the kitchen today getting some really fun projects done. The freeze dryer, we got some yogurt bites out of the freeze dryer and some vanilla sugar out of the dehydrator. Tons and tons of rolls and that quiche. So it was a good, good day in the kitchen. And now it's gonna be a great afternoon in the garden. So I'm gonna grab some gloves. I'm gonna pour out all the water from these pea seeds. I don't have to pour all the water out, but. I was just thinking, how am I going to carry all of this down there? And that's easy, I can just grab a tray. So I got my three squash seed packets that I want to replant. And then I'm gonna grab some of my sunflowers. I got four different varieties of sunflowers here. And I think that's everything. Some gloves, maybe I'll grab one more set of gloves because sometimes I take them off and I don't know where I put them. I'm gonna get my, I don't know what this is called, but I love this tool. This was a gift and I love it. And then I did buy this for myself. This is a weeding tool. I haven't used it yet. There is some weeding that I need to get done too. And we'll see if we get to that today. For sure, I wanna get the things planted. Weeding is probably lower on the priority. It's in the old garden where the strawberry plants are. But I'm gonna grab this tool just in case. The first thing I need to do though, is get all these seeds or and seedlings down to the garden, which is a feat in and of itself. I don't know if I should do two things at once. I think I don't want to drop anything. One tray at a time. It feels so good to be out here. Now this tray that I'm carrying right now is winter squash. And I have winter squash, summer squash, cucumbers, and melons that I've started. Those do very, very well from planting direct into the ground from seed, but I am planting them from start because I can control the, oh, I think I mentioned to you earlier that I have the, these two trays down here that I forgot about that need to get in the ground too. So we're gonna do that as well. But when you start seeds indoors, you can control the environment a little bit better. I could control a lot easier how much water they were getting. I could monitor it a lot better. And so that's why this year I decided to do my winter squash, summer squash as starts instead of seeds. But I already, this weekend, I spent some time out here 
and I did put some holes in this landscape fabric because I know that this bed is going to be winter squash so I got it prepped and ready to go so I'm gonna put my winter squash on this bed and then what I found while I was down here are these two flats of flowers this over here is zinnias and then we have basil and then there must have been some parsley mixed in with the basil because that's what this is or it could be celery I don't know but that's that so that needs to be planted I have straw flowers and more zinnias and then right here I was able to get my echinacea planted and I can hear I'm not getting very far very fast I figured before I do anything plant anything I need to get some fertilizer I love this fertilizer it's an organic fertilizer it's a pellet let me show you what it is oh man friends this this is a joke not a joke this is <laughs> it <clears throat> at the beginning of the season i tested my soil i amended it with what was recommended to be amended but i could tell that the first round of cold weather crops that i planted needed a little bit more just from the way they were looking so i've been using this all-purpose organic fertilizer i can link it down below it is so far it turned the plants around that were looking really sad they look really good now and so i'm just putting a little bit of this in every hole that i plant and then i ordered this and i haven't used it yet but this is micronutrients and i'm going to start putting a handful of this in each of the holes as well this is from redmond real salt and it is a soil amendment and it says how to apply one five pound pouch will cover 250 square feet or one cup per 30 square feet apply once a year do not over apply it says sprinkle the product uniformly over the soil mix the soil in hmm I probably should have applied that when I applied the original amendments to the soil when my dad did it before we put all the what is it called the weed barrier down but I forgot that I had ordered that and put it in here. So I guess I'm just gonna take a pinch and put a pinch in each one of the holes with the plants. I think that should work just fine. I'm just using this old pot. Oh, this stuff stinks. This fertilizer is fish and kelp and all the things that plants love, but it does give it a nice funky odor. Alrighty friend, now we are armed with all of our plants and our fertilizer. We are ready to figure out where we are going to put all of these goodies. Now if you're new, I am not the type of gardener that has a master plan. That's just not my personality. Sometimes I wish it was. But then also I just enjoy coming out here and just feeling it and kind of thinking it through and playing around and deciding where I want to go put things once I am out here. So I have winter squash and summer squash here. I did not do any calculations on how many I should start or how few or how, how many. I just kind of put seeds in pots and hope for the best. And so what I'm doing is I'm kind of organizing the seeds based on winter squash and summer squash so that I can have a bed that is mostly dedicated to summer squash and beds that are mostly dedicated to winter squash. So I was a little bit not sure what I was going to do. So I knew I was going to put cucumbers and some zinnias here. So I thought, let's go ahead and switch gears from the squash and let's get some zinnias in the corners of this bed and some cucumbers in on the edge of this bed so we can build a trellis later and have the cucumbers go up the trellis since I know that I want that here. I'm going to do this while I then think about <laughs> where we're going to put the winter and summer squash. Well I do know that I'm going to be putting something in this bed. I just hadn't decided if it was going to be summer squash or winter squash. After deliberating I decided this bed here is going to be mostly zucchini and I'll show you there is going to be one winter squash but it's going to be zucchini 
and summer squash because this bed is closer to my kitchen and it's something that I'm going to be harvesting on a more regular basis. Winter squash, things like pumpkins, you plant it once, you let it go, and you just let it grow. You don't have to harvest it throughout the growing season. And so I want to put my winter squash farther away from my kitchen because I'm not going to be accessing it quite as often. Versus zucchinis, you are going to be harvesting it, hopefully, a lot throughout the growing season. Now, one thing we do not have here that I know a lot of gardeners in different parts of the country struggle with is squash vine borers. We just don't have them in our region. And so that's something I've had a few questions. How do you prevent the squash vine borers? I don't have to worry about it because we just don't have it. I know that Rachel from that 1870s homestead, she has quite a few videos. She probably has a playlist dedicated to squash vine borers because in Michigan, that is something that is a pest. It's a pest that actually lays its eggs in the stem of the plant close to the root system. And it lays its larva, its egg in there and then the larva eats its way out of the plant and ends up killing the plant. So it's a pretty devastating pest. We don't have to deal with it. We've got other pests that a lot of areas don't have to deal with. But I just wanted to mention that, that if you are in a region that does have that pesky pest, Rachel is probably gonna be a really good resource for you. So I am getting the different, I will show you which squash is planted where in this bed. I You may have noticed that in the pots there were more than one plant. I put, I think, two seeds in each of the four inch pots and I try to put them kind of far away from each other so that if I did get both to germinate, then I could very gingerly separate the two plants and get two plants from one pot. And for the most part, except for the plants that didn't germinate at all, I was able to do that. I am hoping for a good harvest on summer squash this year, last year. I don't know why, I don't know if it was a, pollen, a pollination problem, if it was a fertilizer problem, but I did not get very many zucchinis and summer squash out of my garden. So this bed is almost completely planted. We have two of our zinnias, our cucumbers. We have Ford Hook Zucchini here. These one, two, three, four, five plants. That's a green zucchini. And then we have Golden Glory. One, two, three, four of those. That's a yellow summer squash. And then we have four of these yellow squash that I got. These are just, it just says, zucchini and it's yellow so that's that and then I put our baby boo pumpkin there and then I think what I'm going to do in the middle when our sunflowers have sprouted I am going to put sunflowers directly down the middle of this raised bed I don't know if that's a good idea or a bad idea but I think the sunflowers will probably get about four or four and a half feet tall and I think that they won't shade out the zucchini plants but time will tell on that but that's what I'm thinking so it might be a few days before I do that so let me know if you think that's a crazy idea so what I'm gonna do here so I've got my my cucumbers here Josh is gonna help me probably tonight build a trellis I've got these two muncher cucumbers I think I'm gonna take these two cucumbers and I'm gonna stick one there and there and that way this whole trellis will just be a cucumber trellis I think, so I'm gonna do two arch trellises, I think, and my other arch trellis is gonna have our melons on it. And I have four that sprouted, so I'm gonna to have to start some more from seed, but that's gonna be at the whole other end of the garden. Just like that, we got one, another bed planted. Now, I want to get these black beans planted. While I was planting these, I thought, I figured where I wanna put these black bean seeds that were a gift. Probably just got dirt all over my face now. This is the bed we just planted for reference. And I was thinking I would put them here. I did go ahead and I got some holes prepped over the weekend around some of these pepper plants. So I think I'm just gonna stick these black beans 
in some of these holes that I made. It's definitely a lot easier to make holes when the soil is moist like this. Last time I planted the black beans out, it was very, very dry and it was much more difficult. The radishes are looking really good. One thing I wasn't so sure about after putting this landscape fabric down is if I was gonna like it because it felt kind of cumbersome and annoying, <laughs> honestly, that I had to burn holes in order to plant. Because like I said, I'm someone who just likes to get out here and feel it. And sometimes I'll just grab some seeds, come down to the garden, and I want to sprinkle seeds wherever they'll fit. And I do have to obviously think a little bit more and plan to have like a blowtorch in order to burn the holes in order to plant. And so it was feeling kind of cumbersome. But the longer into the growing season we've gotten, the more I'm enjoying it. And I think that it is also keeping the soil temperature a little bit warmer and it's also keeping moisture in, which is great. I can tell that where the landscape fabric is versus where it isn't, the, the soil is got a lot more moisture to it, which in the heat of the summer, I think is gonna be a good thing. That was the perfect amount of black bean seeds for this bed. So now we officially have two beds down. Let's go ahead and do another thing that's gonna be really easy that I'm gonna be able to just check off the list, and that's get the corn in the ground. And I prepped this whole bed for corn seeds. And then I'm gonna put some sort of winter squash on the end here. I haven't decided which one yet, but first I'm gonna go ahead and get these planted. Because the landscape fabric is down, I can't just get out there, grab some seeds, and put seeds where I want to this first year. But my plan is to save this landscape fabric and reuse it for as many years as it will hold up. And I will already have holes burnt in with kind of plants that I like to grow together. So I like to grow onions around my peppers and tomatoes. I like to grow beans around my peppers and tomatoes. And I already have five raised bed landscape fabric burnt for the, that application. So my plan is not to grow my peppers and tomatoes in the same spot that I'm growing them this year. I like to rotate my crops throughout my raised beds, but I can put the landscape fabric in the beds that I want next year, and then I will be able to just come out and plant in the holes that are already placed in the landscape fabric. I, I hope that makes sense, and I hope that this landscape fabric lasts for, the, for you know a few years, but only time will tell, and we'll just see how it goes. So this bed is the corn bed. As you can see, we're planting the corn. And I planted, or I burned these holes very close together. This is way closer together than is recommended on the seed packet, but I'm planting this corn in a raised bed. This soil is pretty nutrient dense and I am amending the soil with more amendments. So I will be feeding my crops. Corn is a very heavy feeder and I plan to fertilize it throughout the growing season. So my thought is that it can handle a little bit closer spacing. So we got the entire corn bed planted out with corn. I put at least one, some of the holes have two seeds in, and the goal is to hopefully have some good germination in this bed. Last year I preserved up 92 ears of corn and we've already gone through all that corn. And so if I could get 150 ears of corn from this raised bed, I don't think I'm going to, but if I could, that would be a dream. I think that's how much corn we will need to get us through one entire year's worth of corn. If I don't end up growing corn, if this becomes a flop, I will rely on my local farmers and I will purchase corn from them and preserve it up. But I'm really excited to give this new experiment a try. At the end of this corn bed, I planted some fairy tale pumpkins. I will show you in a little bit what those look like. And then in the corners and on the end here, I am planting some zinnias. Fairy tale pumpkins with our nasturtiums in the middle. All of this is corn. And then down here where I did the zinnias, I did purple, lime, purple, lime. Cause I thought the purple and lime contrast would look really nice. Now I need to figure out still <laughs> where I'm gonna put all the rest of these squash and flowers. It's a good problem to have. Friends, look what I just found in the garden. <laughs> 
Oh goodness, we've got all of our parsley that needs to be planted. This is our thyme. We started all this from seed, so this is pretty awesome. I just need to figure out a place to put this. This definitely needs to go into the ground today. <laughs> I could harvest a ton of that parsley. That is amazing, and this thyme just smells incredible. One of the pure joys of growing herbs is getting to smell them in the garden. It is just luxurious. So here I'm showing you, these are some of the peas that we soaked and I need to get them into the ground. You can see here where there is a little bit of poor germination rate. I had planted these peas about two weeks before and you can see it was kind of spotty germination. So I want one entire row of peas to grow along the back side of that bed, which means I need to plant some more peas. And the first time we planted peas, I planted them about an inch apart. This second time I planted them, I planted them probably a quarter inch apart. I planted them so heavily. They have already sprouted. They're looking fantastic. And so I'm really excited about now that I replanted, we've got quite a few peas. Now this bed is a bed we are gonna tackle next. So my dad and I, we spent a day putting this landscape fabric down and on this bed, we ran out of soil amendments and so we did not get the landscape fabric down on this bed. So I needed to get it down before I planted my winter squash. This is where I decided I was gonna plant winter squash. It's kind of far away from, it's one of the beds that's the farthest away from the house and I thought that I would just be able to plant the winter squash in this bed and let it go all season long. And you can already see there's weeds all growing in this bed. So this is why I'm thinking it is good that we are using this landscape fabric. So I just wanted to show you that weeds are starting to come up and I am, I'm really glad that we're using the landscape fabric. So what I did is I put those trace minerals amendments down first and then I went ahead and I put some of just the all-purpose fertilizer pellets down and I'm raking that in the top few inches of this bed. I will, throughout the growing season, um, fertilize my plants. I've never really done that in the past. I haven't done a ton of research on fertilizing throughout the growing season and I know that there are scheduled times that different gardeners recommend feeding your plants and so I'm going to do a little bit more research and I plan to try to focus on feeding my plants throughout the growing season because I can tell that I when I started my seedlings indoors and I was feeding them fertilizer they just grew to be such strong seedlings that it made such a big difference for my seedlings so I'm hoping that it will make a difference for the actual plants in the beds as well. So now that I have the amendments in the bed, I am going to take my landscape fabric that I cut to the correct size. I like to cut it about five to six inches on each side longer than it needs to be so I can tuck it in. I did take my blowtorch and I sealed the ends so that it wouldn't just fray on the ends on me. And then I like to tuck the landscape fabric up underneath the bed, the lip of the bed, because we live in a wind tunnel and we get extremely high winds. I want to make sure that this landscape fabric doesn't blow away on me. And then I have some staples and I go ahead and staple it down. I put about, I would say about, I think 10 staples in the landscape fabric. At first, I wasn't so sure about the lines on the landscape fabric. I wanted to see if I could find all black, but in the end, I'm really glad that it has the lines because it I eyeball everything when I burn the holes and it makes for much straighter lines. Got it. <laughs> that was an incredible amount of work. I'm so grateful that my dad came here to help me with the other 15 because if I did all these by myself, wow, that would have been a lot. I think it's going to be worth it though. I kept going back and forth in the beginning, but now I think that in the end it will be worth it. Now I get to start burning some holes. So here I am just taking my blow torch. This is the butane torch. It's actually for making creme brulee, but it's working perfect for burning these holes. I do have a bigger torch, but I like this little one because it gives me a lot more control over the 
the size of the hole I make when I use the bigger torch the it just kind of gets away from me and I, some of the holes end up being too big and I like to try to keep them as small as possible just so that the less soil that's exposed the better mother nature does not like to be naked she likes to be covered up <laughs> and so if I don't cover it with either mulch landscape fabric mother nature is going to cover it with weeds and it's just a way to protect herself from erosion and it's just plants want to grow and if there's an, a soil that's exposed they're going to grow i have tried growing by covering my beds with mulch because i guess i should answer this question a lot of you have asked why don't i use mulch as a weed preventer instead of landscape fabric and it's because i live in the pacific northwest and we have a tremendous amount of slugs. So we might not have uh, squash vine borers, but we have slugs, so many slugs, tons and tons of slugs. And so the few times I have tried to use uh, we uh, not weeds, <laughs> leaves and things as mulch or straw, slugs live in mulch. They come out, they eat your plants, and then they go back in the mulch. And so that's why I'm not using mulch. So I'm going to show you what these pumpkins are going to hopefully look like if they produce. We have four Cinderella pumpkins. These have produced very, very well for me in the past. We've got four Long Island cheese. I'm sorry, these are not Long Island cheese. Yeah, Long Island cheese. I've never grown those. I'm really looking forward to that. And then I don't know how to say this. It's spelled M-U-S-Q-U-E province it is a beautiful beautiful pumpkin and I've never grown that before either so I'm excited to try that two fairy tale I've never grown that either and I've never grown these four these are long whites so I'm excited to try that and then we still have these we get to plant and I'm gonna walk around and figure out where I'm gonna put them we are gonna put one of the trellises back way back there and I know that I want another trellis here for the melons so I thought you know what before I start walking around and figuring out where I'm going to put the rest of those pumpkins because I don't know where I'm going to put them I know that I want to put a trellis here it's going to be this kind of trellis I just need Josh's help so we're going to get these two types of melons planted this is a Kajari melon I'll show you what that will look like and then over here this is I only got four out of the seeds I planted I think eight seeds total and <laughs> I only got four to germinate but that's okay this is this type of melon <laughs> and I'll show you what that looks like so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these two melons here and then I'm probably going to put some zinnias in the corners and then I'm going to put the kajari melon here I'll separate those two and I'll put one there and one there and then I'll probably put some zinnias on the outside again. I've never grown melons before, so I'm excited. I, well, I tried last year. I planted melon seeds out directly into the garden and I didn't have one germinate. So this is already more of a success than last year. So that's exciting. I'm putting Sam and Zinnias in the corner of each one of these beds just to help bring some color. So over here is the Kajari melon and I don't think I'm going to burn holes in this one because this landscape fabric didn't come all the way to the side. So I'm just going to fold this one up. Doing a couple different ways is going to give me more information for next year, what worked better and what doesn't work better. 
if I did it all the exact same way, I wouldn't have anything to compare. So that's why I am going to flip this under. And I might not like this way as well, but I won't know until we're in serious growing, growing season mode. Or I might like this way better, I don't know. We are making some serious progress. Now, we're probably not gonna get to every single last thing that I wanted to get to today, but we are checking off quite a few things. So we got our melons here, our melons and our zinnias in the corner. And then I did go ahead and I put our Atlantic mel uh, pumpkins. This is the world record of the largest pumpkin here so that that can just vine out this way. And then I've got one Jardel. I only had one of these to germinate and I planted it in the corner here so it can vine out this way. And then I put in this corner the last pumpkin that I have or had to plant and that is another long white. So we are continually emptying our pots, which is fantastic. So now I wanna get some more of those peas that I started filled in to where I had some poor germination rate on some of my peas and I came up with a really fast way to get those in the ground. I take this weeding tool and I run it along the edge. It creates a trench and then I can take my pre-soaked seeds and I can put them in my trench and then I can cover them up with soil. So like I mentioned earlier, I am planting these very, very closely and they have popped up. They're looking great. I probably will keep doing that. As long as they produce well, I will probably continue to plant my pea seeds very, very close together. So these are not a shelling pea. These are a, um, like a sugar snap pea or a snow pea. It's a pea where you're not gonna eat just the inside pea part, but you're gonna eat the pods as well. <laughs> the first uh, year I was gardening, first two years I was gardening, I did not realize there was a difference between a sugar snap pea, snow pea, and a shelling pea. And so I planted shelling peas and Shelling peas, you need a tremendous amount of shelling peas to get a few peas. I grew probably the same amount of peas as I did this year, my first year, and I did shelling peas. And once I harvested the peas and I shelled them, I probably spent about six hours shelling peas and I only ended up with one gallon worth of peas. So I will probably never grow a shelling pea again because I can purchase at the grocery store, you know, frozen peas, organic too, for a very affordable price. And so for me, it's not worth the space in my garden to give it up for such a little yield. But when you grow a sugar snap pea or a snow pea and you can eat the, the peas and the pods, you get a lot more volume. And so in my garden, I only grow snow peas and sugar snap peas. And I like them both the same. So I did end up mixing the snow peas and the sugar snap peas together. I will just harvest them and enjoy them and enjoy them in the garden. I love to snack on them in the garden. It's one of my favorite snacks in the garden to snack on while I am gardening. And then I also like to make a really quick dinner side dish with them. You get a cast iron skillet, piping, piping hot. You put some butter in there, you throw the peas in, you blister them for just a minute or two. They get a nice char on the outside, but they're still crunchy and sweet. You salt and pepper them and they make one of the best summer side dishes ever. So now what I'm doing is I'm going through after I got everything planted that I have time to plant today and I'm cleaning up my mess. I do end up leaving that tray of zinnias. I got a lot of the zinnias planted, but not all of them. I come out another day and we finish planting the zinnias. And then the straw flowers, I didn't get any straw flowers planted on this day either, but that's okay. We will another day get them into the ground. So I'm going to leave the straw flowers and the zinnias on this bed because I I'll be watering this bed tonight 
and I can just water the straw flowers and zinnias and leave them on this bed. But I am gonna take all of the rest of the goodies that I had out here, all these pots and the fertilizer and my tools, I'm gonna to bring all of those inside and we're gonna get those put away. I'm just trying to reduce the amount of trips I take by stacking it really well so I can bring them all up to the grow room. Wow, did we get a lot done out there and clean my mess up, which is woohoo, half the battle. I'm trying to keep my garden area more clean and tidy so that I can enjoy being out there more. I definitely have, um, I can just know myself that if I keep it clean and tidy, I will enjoy spending time out there more. And last year, I was so busy and pregnant that I did not do the best job of that. And so this year, I'm going to make a big effort to do a better job with even things like this, like putting my pots away, putting my seeds away. Now, I'm not going to put... Oh, no! Uh-oh. I just spilled a couple seeds. These are my very special sunflower seeds and I don't want to lose them so I'm going to take the time to pick all of them up. Good thing they just fell into this drawer. A couple more in here. Okay. So I'm not going to put these away because I did not get to planting these tonight and so I don't want to put them away and then have to get them back out again. So this is kind of my project area where when I have things that I need to keep working on I put up there. So that's where those are gonna go. I'm gonna finish taking care of all these. This is all garbage here. I did not get to planting any more, where are they? All right here. Any of these pumpkins, the more Jardel or sweet meat. The only one I probably am still going to plant is sweet meat because sweet meat is one of my favorite winter squash that I have grown that I know I really like that variety, but I just didn't get to planting it today. We got a lot done, more actually than I thought I was going to. I gave myself, I'm gonna get all those plant starts that are out there planted. Well, let me show you what I still have out there. You saw that I left some of the zinnias and things on the raised bed. I might go out, well, I am gonna go back out there tonight to water everything, because I didn't water, I haven't watered anything in, and it does need to be watered, but I do need to kind of get this space cleaned up a little bit, and then I need to go inside. I've got inside responsibilities that I need to take care of, so I think I will end up going Well, I, I will, I know I will end up going out there tonight and watering everything in really well because it's gonna get really, really hot. And I don't want those seeds to dry out. So one thing that I can tell you that is not my favorite thing about the landscape fabric is when I burn the holes, I get these rounds that I have to, I put them in this jar, that I then have to dispose of, but I think in the long run, I'm gonna really like it. Nothing is ever perfect, right? We're always working in a type of situation where we're trying to reduce the most inconveniences, right? So, I mean, I guess maybe there's things that are perfect, I don't know. Probably not. These need to go inside and be washed. Oh, friends, that was so awesome. I don't even have to worry about dinner. I've got quiche I pulled out of the oven that we can have for dinner or um what else do I have oh I thought out some pasties which are really really yummy I got myself a new set of gloves which is awesome my gloves were starting they were a couple years old and I wash these every time I use them almost and so after about two years of pretty heavy use the fingers tips start to wear out but they're very, very affordable gloves, so I, I still really like those gloves. But those need to be washed. And then I have charging here a weed whacker because I wanted to get to taking care of 
the previous owner's garden area and kind of cleaning that up, cleaning up where the strawberries were, but I never got to that and that's fine. We will maybe get to that tomorrow. We'll see. We'll see what we get to. I just want to say a huge thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me in my garden. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I am so grateful that this is the time of year we are in where we are spending more time outside, getting some sunshine, getting some vitamin D, getting some exercise. Let me tell you, I would way rather go out there and do a million squats in the garden than go to an exercise class any day. That is one of the biggest benefits to gardening for me is just moving my body, getting myself outside and feeling like there is something that's bigger than me that I'm working towards. And that is my garden. And I'm just so grateful for it. I'm grateful for you. Uh, I just really appreciate the fact that you take time out of your day to spend time with me. I do not take that for granted. And I can, if you want, I can pop a couple of my other videos here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. Just thank you again for being here. Thank you again for being you. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.